What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. In today's video, we're going to look at some missed opportunities the Las Vegas Raiders had against the Kansas City Chiefs. This was probably the worst game of the season in my opinion. Not only did we not score enough points, but we gave up the most points we've given up all season. We hadn't given up 30 points and we gave up 41 against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I want to start this off with the first drive of the game for the Raiders on the offensive side of the ball. The Raiders are in a third and two, and they're going to run Josh Jacobs right through the middle of the field on, on a, a crossing pattern out of the backfield. And Josh catches the ball, turns around, and instead of just going north and south, he's going to try to go east and west, and he tries to jump past one of the Kansas City Chiefs defender, and he gets tackled. Now, this right here is terrible awareness by Josh Jacobs. You have to get the first down. You should know before the play starts that I need one yard. I need to reach out for the ball if that's what it takes and pick that first down up. Instead, Josh is trying to go sideways and that ultimately uh, puts the Raiders in a fourth and one situation. And then you have Alex Leatherwood who's going to fall start. I'm sick of Alex Leatherwood's inability to not fall start, not hold. It's getting really bad. It's costing us football games. It's costing us touchdowns and missed opportunities. You know, there was a big one earlier this season uh, where Leatherwood held to, on a Brian Edwards touchdown pass. And those type of plays are, are killer. Instead of continuing our drive, our drive where we're already at the 48, 47 yard line on, on the Chiefs side of the field, we could have potentially put up points on this drive. Instead, we're now punting the football. This was a huge missed opportunity in my personal opinion. Now, although Josh Jacobs, in my opinion, has to be more aware on these type of plays, Zay Jones was also wide open. Third and one, Zay's wide open, and Derek Carr and said those to Josh Jacobs. This is as much on Derek Carr as it is on Josh Jacobs. Now, jumping forward to the next missed opportunity, this one also comes on the offense side of the ball. This is a third and two, third and three situation. It's a short yard situation. The Raiders are great at converting these into first downs. And you're going to see that the Raiders right tackle Brandon Parker jumps and false starts on this play, and we get set back five yards. And now the Raiders are looking at a third and seven, which it's not unmanageable, but it is different than a third and two, third and three. And basically, Derek Carr is going to check it off to the running back. Now, some people have tagged me in this play on Twitter saying that Derek should have hit Darren Waller. Darren Waller was wide open. I don't know if I 100% agree with Darren Waller being wide open. I, I think, I believe that's a safety. He was pretty close. He could have potentially made an impact on the ball. Uh, ultimately, sure, I would have loved for Derek to actually make that throw instead of the check down. Um, but the check down is not necessarily the wrong play, right? Our guy should make at least one guy miss. And that's not happening right now. Our guys aren't making anyone miss. If this was Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Adrian Peterson in his prime, these guys break these tackles. And for the Raiders, we don't have those type of players. We don't have those players that can break tackles and make plays. Like, at what point are we going to start getting guys that can make plays? And I know Josh Jacobs is supposed to be that guy for us. But there's just something going on with Josh this year. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I don't know if he had a bad off season, but Josh is not being Josh. And I know this isn't Josh. I, I totally get it. Uh, but this is a huge missed opportunity. You go from a false start to not even attempting the first down, in my opinion. Uh, instead, you check it off. But uh, regardless, this was an, another missed opportunity. The Raiders could have had a prime drive going, but instead, uh, this was a three and out. So instead of even wasting any clock and, and potentially allowing your defense to rest up on the sideline, you're throwing them back out there right away. And this is not acceptable. Now, I want to stay on the offense of the ball, and uh, I want to show you guys this play. I want to show you guys a set of three back-to-back-to -back -to plays. Now, this is another three and out. Uh, this is literally the next drive the Raiders get the ball back. In my opinion, the play calling is very suspect here because the Raiders are going to run three plays, same formation, all three are passes, and it's very interesting. Like, at what point are we going to change the, the play up, right? Like, the play design, the play concept. It seems like the Chiefs just kind of play man-to-man, -man and the Raiders aren't really able to beat it. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but when you're putting a safety in the box, you got to take those shots deep. Uh, maybe you throw it to Deshaun Jackson here. Uh, maybe Zay Jones goes deep, but something has to happen that's different than what you're doing. Three plays, three straight passes, back to back to back, out of the same formation, and that's what really gets me. I, I get this is a situation uh, before halftime, the Raiders are trying to get downfield, score a touchdown, get some points on the clock. So I understand the need to pass three straight times, 
but why out of the same formation it, and it seems like the chiefs pretty much defend it the same way and this is another quick three now and this is not okay because time of possession is such a big part for a team to win now jumping forward i'm going to show you guys two more offensive plays uh, some missed opportunities and then we'll switch over to some of the defensive side of the ball some defensive plays but on this play here you know a lot of people question why deshaun jackson didn't catch this pass and just continue to run straight um, the reason why is very clear and i'm surprised that people made such a big deal out of it i heard people say things like oh he wanted to taunt he was trying to turn around to start taunting uh, some people said you know he uh, he should have just continued running straight i mean if you guys just watched the play it was very clear he would not have been able to catch this pass and continue to run straight this other corner on the bottom of your screen would have tackled him he was literally trying to avoid this corner and potentially turn around and and run the opposite way and unfortunately the corner just happened to knock the ball out of uh, jackson's hands uh, it's still a nice design the o-line does a good job uh, it was a good designed play unfortunately it just did not hit for the raiders now keep in mind right there's nothing you can do there's nothing more Derek carr can do on this play there's nothing more that the offensive line the running backs could do on this play uh, deshaun jackson just has to hold the ball man you cannot allow you to catch a pass get 40 50 yards and then you fumble the ball at the end of it like i'd rather have you just go down at the 10 yard line than 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 fumble the ball right now i will say this i'm all for jackson to catch a pass and try to make that next play i'm okay with it i'm actually okay with the fact that he fumbled this ball because he was trying to make an additional play in my opinion if you're trying to make a play and, and you make a mistake i'm okay with that right just try not to do it every single game every other play uh, i think deshaun jackson was such a great pickup for the raiders for the sole reason that he's gonna make so many plays throughout the rest of the season again we're literally still five and four the season is not over we still have a ton going for ourselves we still have a good roster in my opinion especially on the defense side of the ball we're so much better and i think the raiders can bounce back now the last opportunity i want to show you that the raiders missed out on uh, this this comes on uh probably the third last drive of the game uh, the raiders are really in a situation where uh, it's not completely over it is still a two possession game at this point the raiders can still pick a first down up and, and potentially score a touchdown and you can still technically tie the game at this point now on first down we're gonna throw to hunter renfro a nice little pass but what really gets me is on second and third down see on second down you're going to see that john simpson gets beat right at the line of scrimmage Derek carr had a wide open uh, darren waller running in the middle of the field uh, the play starts like this darren waller is going to pump it to the outside the safety bites to the outside and you're going to hit darren waller right in the middle of the field i uh, probably wouldn't have picked up any more yards because the safety would have gotten there just in time to make the play at least in my opinion that's what it looked like but instead Derek carr gets hit doesn't have the time and because of the fact that Derek Carr gets hit on this play specifically, he's not able to deliver the pass. And that's a huge blow in my opinion because it looked like this play would have picked up a chunk yards. Now jumping into the next play, the third down play on the same exact drive, the Raiders are basically going to once again, in my opinion, get, get tricked. And I think this is why Josh Jacobs doesn't play as much as he should, especially on third down situations. He just doesn't key and diagnose plays correctly, in my opinion. On this play, the Chiefs are going to bring a bunch of guys on the line of scrimmage like they have always been doing over the past three to four years. And they're going to drop back their defensive tackle. They're going to drop back the linebacker that's uh, lined up over John Simpson. But they're going to bring three or four guys from the right side of the field, from the Raiders, right guard, right tackle. And Josh Jacobs, for whatever reason, goes to his left. I get that's what he was told to do before the play uh, was called, and that was his responsibility. But at a certain point, you have to make an adjustment. Maybe you look to your right, and you, you see that more guys are coming from the right. At the same time, Alex Leatherwood, what the hell are you doing, man? Like, Andre James picks up this guy, and Leatherwood goes down with him. Block out, man. Pick that guy up to the outside. You know, it seems like the Raiders had so many opportunities missed on the offensive side of the ball. And had we just hit on half of those, right? Had we just completed that one pass to Brian Edwards here or Darren Waller there, or the offensive lineman makes their block, or Derek Carr makes that pass to Zay Jones in the middle of the field, had we just done these things correctly, the Raiders would have been looking at a much different ball game. Instead, we're we're not sustaining drives. We're going three and out, three and out, 
three and out, and the defense is not going to be able to hold the Kansas City Chiefs all night. They allowed 41 points, and I would argue they allowed, uh, you know, somewhere around uh, 28 to 32 points when the game really mattered. And once the game started getting out of hand, that's when the Chiefs really put on a, a couple more, you know, touchdowns, and the game kind of ended. But again, it wasn't just the offense side of the ball where the Raiders missed plays. Take this first down play as an example. You're going to see the Raiders are going to tackle the Chiefs running backs for a loss of two yards. So instead of second and 12, which is what the Chiefs would have faced, Max Crosby and Quinton Jefferson make a boneheaded mistake. And you lose, you give up 15 yards to the, to the Chiefs and an automatic first down. Now on this drive, they score, they score a touchdown. And second and 12 is a prime down for you to get some pass rushing, to potentially get some sacks, to get that pressure on Patrick Mahomes, and potentially put them in the third and long and get your offense the ball back. This was a huge mistake in my opinion by the Raiders because these type of plays, the Chiefs didn't make these. It was only the Raiders making these boneheaded mistakes. So when your offense is not clicking the way it has shown in the past, and then on the defense side of the ball, you're making these type of mental mistakes, you're not going to win and it wasn't just mental mistakes that the Raiders had the Raiders just weren't lucky like let's be honest think about this play right here uh, Nate Hobbs is going to do a great job reading it he's going to do a great job getting off the block and he punches the ball out and this is a play no one will ever think about going forward but Nate Hobbs punches the ball out and Tyree Kale ends up just getting the lucky bounce where he's the way he's running the ball bounces towards him could you imagine if Nate Hobbs punched this out and the ball bounces four yards the other way and maybe Tyreek Hill isn't able to get it and then a, and a Raiders defender falls on this ball and the Raiders get the ball. Think about it. They're at the 32 yard line. This would have literally saved points had the Raiders been able to, to get this lucky break and the ball bounce our way. At the same time, we also had two dropped interceptions. One came from Casey Hayward. The other came with Trayvon Merrick. Those would have flipped the game. And the Raiders typically would make those plays, right? Like Casey Hayward doesn't drop interceptions. He made a great break on the ball and he should have picked it off. Unfortunately, it just did not go his way. The ball fell right through his hands. And then Trayvon Merrick had an interception, which would have also saved points. Same situation, uh, as he falls, the ball gets dropped. That's his second dropped interception in those similar situations. He has to learn to catch the ball. He has to get better at that because he's going to have these opportunities. He's the post safety for a reason. He's that sideline to sideline guy for a reason. Now, obviously he's a rookie. I think as he gets uh, you know, more experience in the league, the speed slows down. Uh, he understands how hard a ball is going to come when a quarterback throws the ball. Uh, he will start being able to, to make these plays he'll be able to start catching these passes again everything went wrong for the Raiders in this game so although you can make certain points that hails this guy's fault or that guy's fault at the end of the day the Raiders pretty much got beat in every phase of the game offense defense and even special teams like the Kansas City Chiefs their special teams coach saw something, and I saw as well uh, when I was watching film last week, and I said, this doesn't look right. Like, the Raiders could easily give up a fake here if you time it right, if the Kansas City Chiefs timed it right, or if a team in general timed it right, and the Chiefs timed it right. Like, they, the, the Raiders gunners, instead of getting up there and trying to slow these guys down, press them, what the Raiders gunners are doing is, as soon as the ball snapped, they're starting to run backwards. That's not okay, because as the Kansas City Chiefs did to Brandon Faison, the guy just stopped exactly where the first down was needed. The punter threw it. He knew exactly when to throw it, and the guy caught the ball. And Brandon Faison was taught to do this, right? So that's a flaw on the Raiders. Typically, as a gunner, you're going to get your hands on that that, uh, that 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 guy that's running down the field, and you're going to slow him down so he wouldn't have this opportunity to slow down. But the Raiders were doing this differently for whatever reason. They've been doing this for the last couple of weeks. And the Chiefs saw it, and they saw the opportunity. They took advantage, and this was a huge win for, for the Chiefs because the defense was going to the sideline pumped up ready for the offense to go down and, and score a touchdown and this happens you know it, it seems like there were so many opportunities for the Raiders and we just weren't able to get it together but I'm okay with it because we still play the Chiefs one more time in a couple of weeks I think the Raiders can get a victory uh, when we go and play them remember a lot of what happens in the league sometimes is you know a team may come out and win by 41 week 
and that team that they're going to play next week may have lost by 30 that week and then when they meet each other the following week one team might be coming off of a victory 40 points the other might have came off an embarrassing loss and typically the team that has came off an embarrassing loss they're pumped up and ready to win and a lot of the times like they will compete and that's kind of what happened with with the raiders in this situation the chiefs put the giants and they barely beat the giants the raiders obviously also lost as well but the chiefs really wanted to turn things around so they came into this game pumped up fired up and the raiders came into this game kind of soft kind of flat but going into next week, the Raiders just got embarrassed against the Chiefs. Expect them to come out fighting against the Cincinnati Bengals. Expect the Raiders to really go at it with the Bengals. Expect to win, man. Uh, the Raiders are still 5-4. and four. The season's not over. We can still make the playoffs. We can still win the AFC West. Like, the AFC West is it, not already a given that the Chiefs or the Chargers are going to win. Like, the Raiders are still right there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about the uh, the production, the way it was kind of produced, the format of the video in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about the Raiders in general. Hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time with another video.